Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Um, and for any in the choir, if y'all wish to come sit up front, you're welcome to. You can also just stay back there too, but don't feel like you have to look at my back the whole time. So, these readings. <laughs> Clearly, uh, the people who created the Revised Common Lectionary were not thinking about how this coincided with St. Francis's Feast Day, <laughs> a time when we would want to celebrate and uh, be present with the joy and the frivolity of our animals, our uh, earthly companions, and yet, and yet we're drawn into such complex, challenging readings. In particular, I'm drawn into the gospel this morning where Jesus is being confronted by the Pharisees, asked about divorce. And what, what starts off as this very heavy topic that for many of our ears is uncomfortable to hear, Jesus ends it with compelling us to be as children to enter the kingdom of God. How does children relate with this conversation of divorce, we might be asking ourselves. When we enter into difficult moments like this with Jesus within the gospel, I find it is always best to start with Jesus and see where he points us to go. Because while these two moments seem like they're disconnected from each other, I think that they are very much about the same thing. When we look to Jesus in this passage, he points immediately to the children in their midst. He says it is to children that the kingdom of God will be fully known and fully revealed. Which is interesting, because when we think about children, there, there's a lot that that inhabits, right? There's joy, there's life, there's wonder, there's curiosity and excitement. There's also a lot of questions, a lot of repeating, a lot of getting themselves in trouble, and just figuring out how to live life. There is such joy and such challenge being a child. But so what does Jesus mean about being as children entering the kingdom of God? And as I sat with that, I remembered that there's a scripture passage that we hear every Sunday that I think can help us open this up. Perhaps it's familiar to you. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself up for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Sound familiar to most of us? It ought to. Most Episcopal churches, Anglican churches around the world, that is the sentence, that is the scripture that the clergy will say before we receive up the offering, before we come to this table. But well, we only get to hear the latter part of it. There's more to this verse, which if you're curious of reading it in context, it's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ has loved us. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. That, my friends, is where I hear Jesus pointing us today. We are called, we are reminded today in this passage, in this, this scripture that we hear every Sunday, that to lean into the kingdom of God as a child starts with imitation. Children are wonderful at this, right? That is how we learn, that's how we grow. We learn how to become an adult how to live in this world by imitating those around us. We imitate our parents, our grandparents, our friends, our teachers. Heck, we even imitate the people and the things that we find on our social medias and in our TV. Not all imitation is good, but we as children always are in a space of imitating until we grow into. And so when we hear this word, this, this uh, scripture to walk in love as Christ has loved us, we are being invited in how to imitate. We're being invited to imitate Christ. We're called to imitate how Jesus lived and walked in love. 
And we do that as Christians because we believe that it is through Jesus that we know God fully and completely. We hear that in our epistle reading from Hebrews today, where we hear about how Christ Jesus was present from the very beginning, how all of us, all of creation was made in and through Christ with God the Creator. We are reminded that Jesus is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. When we imitate walking in love as Christ did, we imitate our great creator. We imitate God's desire for the world. And that is so important today, isn't it? It is so important when we are surrounded by so many others that wish us to imitate other things. The imitations that would lead us to seek power and privilege, wealth over a person's dignity and value, that would seek violence over peace. It's in these spaces, such as our gospel passage, where we hear difficult passages that we are invited into what would Christ have us do and be in this space. When Jesus talks about divorce in this, I just I want to contextualize this a bit. I, we won't go too deep into it, but let's recognize that divorce is being talked about there is not the same as the divorce that we talk about today. Divorce in the ancient Near East was something that only a man could do in certain situations. And there was a power struggle, a power imbalance within these relationships where the women and the children who are being dismissed and divorced in these moments are cast out with no financial security. Hopefully they've got a, 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 a parent still to go back to, but they are put in places of vulnerability. What we see here reflected in this is Jesus is very much raising to our attention how to walk in love with each other, which is about paying attention to how our actions and our decisions impact those around us, particularly those who are most vulnerable. And I think this expands out. It expands out beyond just the conversation around marriage, right? Because what, what's being named here ultimately is God's desire from the very beginning is that all relationships are rooted in respect and dignity and trust, compassion, love. That each relationship, whether that is a relationship with a spouse or a friend or a family member, a neighbor or the stranger, that we do it in such a way, that we walk in that in such a way that we are honoring that person's dignity, the divine spark that is in each of them. So really, the uncomfortableness of Jesus' words today is really about how we honor human relationship amongst ourselves, our relationship with God, and our relationship with the wider beings of the world. And we're invited into these difficult spaces, into the pains and the challenges and the sufferings of the world through walking in love through modeling what Jesus modeled and taught. When we look at him, when we look at that way of love, we see that Jesus did not ask, does someone deserve to be fed? Jesus fed them. Jesus didn't ask, are you worthy? Have you worked hard enough to get a roof over your head? He said, no, you clothe them. You protect them. When Jesus comes across people who are pushed aside to the margins of society, Jesus doesn't stop and say, well, mm, they must have deserved it. No, Jesus said, come and join me. There is a space for you at God's table. And you have dignity and value and worth. And what we see in Jesus and all these things, right? It, there wasn't a hindrance. There wasn't an obstacle that Jesus puts there. Jesus says, come and be in relationship with me. Come and be in relationship with God. Come and be in relationship with one another. You see, from the very beginning, Jesus wasn't doing this on his own. Jesus went to his cousin John to be baptized. And after he went to his cousin John for a little bit of help with that, he started calling his disciples. And those whom he healed and he fed joined the movement. They came together. Our faith, our walking in love isn't something we can do on our own. 
It is something we do as church, as community. We need one another because it's hard to walk in love. It is hard, it is challenging to do these things that Jesus models for us. But together, together we walk and together we can achieve the kingdom of God. Come on in, y'all, come on in. And this is why today we recognize and we uplift St. Francis. St. Francis, who is so well known for imitating Christ, we come together to remember that by blessing our animals, our, our non-human companions in this world, to celebrate their gift to us and the gift we are to them. It reminds us that our relationships isn't just within those who look like us and talk like us or in the same species, but that we are part of the created order. We are a part of nature as well. And that, in these relationships, it is important to honor. And that's wonderful, that's good. We love blessing our animals. And perhaps we focus on that bit because the rest of St. Francis's story is a little bit more challenging. Because you see, the greatest way that Francis imitated Christ and walked in love wasn't necessarily, in my opinion, going around blessing all the cute little animals, though that's a part of it and it's important. But he renounced the power that came from his noble family. He renounced wealth. He walked away from all the things the world would have us imitate in order to imitate the one who wandered with people, who came up beside people and offered everything to them in love and compassion. And Francis gathered followers. And they struggled with this too. He was so strict they had to create like a middle ground order because he was just, he was too into it. But the point here is that for Francis, his imitation of Christ invited him into a deeper walking and love in the world. And that deepened, walk in, that deepened walk ripples out even to us still today. His walking impacts us, influences us. That's why we celebrate him. That's why we come together as the church Two different parishes coming together because we recognize it is not just the relationships in our immediate family or in our immediate parish, but it is the relationships that we nurture across the whole church, all of creation. This is how we begin to walk in love. And so, as we enter into this new season, between now and in mid-November, as we're coming up on an election, as both of our parishes are coming up on our stewardship seasons, and we are reflecting on the role that our faith communities play in our lives and how they aid us in walking in love, I ask each of us to ponder, how is Jesus inviting us to walk in love? How are we being invited in this moment in time to imitate Christ as dear children? And how might, through our walking in love together, we may sustain, influence, and lift up this new way of life, a way of life that is rooted in love and compassion, where death and decay and brokenness have no power where there is always the hope of a new tomorrow and a resurrected life. How are we being invited to walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God? Amen.